Hello, everyone. My name is Evan Freiberger, and this is Milton. And as you can see, since the last time we looked at Milton, uh, it is starting to look a little bit more organized. You can see that, you know, the storm is definitely getting a little bit bigger here and a little bit more organized. Uh, as you look down at the storm, you can still see it's got some, plenty of uh, cloud tops, cold cloud tops on it, indicating, you know, how big the storm is right now. And you can see that the clouds, even in the higher levels, are starting to kind of rotate around the center of pressure. Uh, and we did just get some breaking news here from the National hurricane center and this uh milton and the storm this uh is now a hurricane this uh, with 80 mile per hour winds so a little bit above a category one uh, like a low end category one strength hurricane and you know once it gets up to 96 miles per hour that's a category two so not so far uh, off from that but here is the 3d view of the storm you can really get a you know a kind of a look at you know just the cloud tops and just how tall this storm is right now as it tries to intensify and we're only expecting milton to intensify further and further as it gets closer to the Yucatan Peninsula and eventually tries to track towards Florida. So we'll be giving you guys all the latest information, all the new information from the National Hurricane Center uh, and right to your ears right now. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, here we are. This is the National Hurricane Center's uh, page here. And as you can see, uh, as of uh, as 10 or 1 p.m. here, Central Time, you can see that this uh, storm has strengthened here to a hurricane. Air Force hurricane hunters find Milton rapidly intensifying into a hurricane so that rapid intensification we've been expecting with Milton is starting to get started. Also, the pressure is starting to drop as well. Last time we looked at it, it was 991. Now it's down to 998 with a max sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. Again, 16 miles per hour off of that category one strength. Uh, here is our uh, latest cone and in interactive map. Let's go ahead and get that loaded up. Kind of zoom in here. As you can see, the wind field with this storm is relatively small right now. It's really not that big of a st uh, storm. You know, that it's it's wind field is pretty compact. This is probably going to stay a pretty compact storm until it starts to interact uh, with that frontal boundary, potentially bring in more dry air. And again, you know, we're kind of expecting this storm to potentially weaken as it approaches land. We also got some new models out, so we'll be looking at that in just a second. Uh, but you can see uh, as we go into 7 a.m. Uh, Central Time, October 7th, uh, this thing is forecasted to be a uh, still a Category 1. But, you know, if it continues to rapidly intensify, it could already be a Category 2 uh, by tomorrow morning. Morning. Uh, going into uh, uh, going into I guess this is yeah October 8th here at 7 p.m. So this is Tuesday night. Uh, this, it's already expected to be a, a category three hurricane with max wind gusts of 155 miles per hour. So pretty strong there. Uh, and then, you know, just to the west of Tampa, as you can see, they are starting to bring in that weakening into their forecast here. So it's 125. And then as we get into 7 a.m. on Wednesday, they're saying that this should be weakening. Start start that weakening. Uh, thing you know which we are been seeing in the model so it's not surprising that it showed up here but 120 uh, miles per hour max wind so a drop of five miles per hour and then that could potentially drop all the way down uh into the future but you know uh look at this a uh, little bit of a shift here at least in the average track again the cone of uncertainty uh is what we should be pay still be paying attention to you know st petersburg cape coral uh north of tampa over here near mimosa springs need to be watching out uh, for landfall still but the average jizz of the model is you, as you can see, have shifted a little bit to the south. And actually, that would be the uh, a good, uh, I guess, a better case scenario for Tampa. You guys wouldn't get the, the worst storm surge. At, but, you know, for Cape Coral, this would bring more impacts if this was a little bit further to the south. So we do got to continue to monitor the latest model trends. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that as well. But first, one thing I did want to point out here uh, is also, uh, you know, we're, we did get some information out here for the storm surge forecast uh, here. And and as you can see in the yellow is greater than three feet and the orange is greater than six feet and in the red is greater than nine feet. As you can see, you know, we're not really seeing many areas uh, in the red. We're seeing a lot of yellows. We're seeing a lot of orange. So three to six feet seems to be what they're calling for, at least at this moment uh, over there in Tampa. But th that could go down if you guys get the northern part of the storm. But I would definitely be keeping your eyes on, it, especially on the west or like kind of like the eastern side of these uh, little bay areas. As if you do get that northern uh, portion of the storm, the winds will be going like this across and that will be bringing the water more uh, into the eastern portion of some of these areas but yeah definitely still some storm surge expected you know if that southern track that continues to verify there and we get a closer approach to cape coral uh, we could be talking about you know three six maybe even nine uh, feet of storm surge in and around the fort myers cape coral areas there near sanibel island which would be obviously not good they just got impacted by ian and it would not be good to see even more impacts but again really hoping this thing strengthens significantly before 
landfall. So let's go check out the latest models uh, on this storm. So of course, as always, starting off with the humidity map, just a quick reminder for those new to the channel, uh, green means a lot of moisture and the or, or the kind of orangish brownish colors here uh, mean a lot of dry air. And uh, as I push this forward, you can see that uh, the GFS is indicating this storm will rapidly intensify, probably hit the peak somewhere north of Yucatan Peninsula. And it's going to continue to track off to the east and gradually strengthen. And then right before land, you can see that pressure really starts to go up and we start to see that drier air start to work in. But I will say, uh, in comparison to the last run, if we go back here, I can press uh, down on the arrow key here and we can go back to previous runs. Uh, you can see that there was more dry air in the last run than there is in this run. You can see there's definitely a difference here. So, you know, I mean, kind of watch this trend. You know, if that dry air, again, you know, what we talked about last forecast is if that dry air does work its way into the storm, uh, it could definitely, uh, you know, cause the storm to weaken. But if this thing can, can hold on to more moisture and that core stay more intact as it starts to battle some more of that shear, uh, then we are going to see this thing. Uh, we are going to see this thing probably keep a little bit more intensity as it approaches landfall so we just got to watch these little nudges back and forth you know i'm kind of still on the same thought process category two category three uh, at landfall um but you know if we start to see these models uptrend back having more moisture at, right before landfall we're going to be talking about a stronger storm but you can see the gfs uh takes this into landfall at around uh you know 18z on wednesday uh which is uh, about uh about uh lunchtime about lunchtime there and pretty close to tampa there still has tampa on the dirty side of the storm which would be bringing uh Unfortunately, a lot of storm surge in there. But let's go check out some of our hurricane models, which kind of handle uh, this a little bit better. We're also going to be looking at the winds of the storm, what the potential winds could be. So uh, kind of bringing this all the way back. We'll do a, a couple of these hurricane models. We'll bring it all the way forward um, or all the way back and then bring it forward. So yeah, rapidly intensifies, uh, hits that peak just to the north of Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, 928 there with a peak knots of 124 knots. That would definitely be a category four hurricane uh, indicated by the HWRF model here and then gradually uh, weakening after that. But look at this, a little bit of a strengthening there on our latest run uh, after it weakens. So does it get that moisture back? Is that going to be a problem? Uh, question mark, question mark. It does seem to be at least at the very end of this model run. It doesn't bring it all the way uh, into the bay here, but uh, definitely seems a little bit more south, um, but uh, you know, not too much south and uh, also seems to be uh, kind of weakening as it approaches land. So maybe a brief strengthening will be possible with an eye replacement cycle might just, you know, doom this storm as it approaches land so we'll see we'll see we'll go check out the, some of the other models here in just a second as well but uh, that's making an approach as a category three hurricane there um, and just off of the coast on wednesday night uh, let's kind of come over here to the hmon I see what it's saying so yeah the latest hmon model still holding on to this thing significantly weakening uh, as it approaches the coast i mean it still has it pretty close towards tampa so the hurricane models are still saying north and they usually handle the trajectory of hurricanes a little bit better uh than uh you know some of the other models so definitely you know i would still be you know on alert in tampa uh definitely still preparing for the storm but it definitely seems like you know we're, we're getting you know still some consistency here on a rapid weakening at least on the hmon model uh and again that brings it into landfall there uh, kind of in northern tampa uh right at around you know third or thursday at around 12 a.m so like really early thursday right as wednesday transitions into thursday there and yeah i mean you can see this thing is spinning more than your uncle uh, on thanksgiving and you know it, it seems like this um it, it, it's still gonna have some impacts i mean even with a weaker storm the wind field's gonna get, be getting bigger uh, which means we'll see more storm surge a little bit further to the south and a little bit for, uh you know and still into the tampa bay area so those are definitely things that people are still gonna have to prepare for um you know definitely want to be prepared for power outages as well i do want to check out a couple more models this is the h fast model and it is also holding on to that scenario still Still holding on to the scenario of a Category 5 hurricane being possible uh, just off of the coast of Florida, but then rapidly weakening as it approaches. But still, I mean, 956, that's nothing to bat an eye at. I mean, we're talking peak intensity here, Category 2, uh, potentially get pretty close to a Category 3 as it makes its way into Tampa. You can see some stronger winds uh, pulling into the Tampa Bay region and still a quite a wide wind field on this storm. Uh, so we definitely still get some pretty significant storm surge. And look at that, North Tampa again on another hurricane hurricane model. Very interesting how a lot of these hurricane models are kind of disagreeing with the other models at this point, but they're all kind of agreeing with each other. Um, you know, still seeing most models pull into Tampa and we'll go look at uh, this one. Yeah, rapidly weakening as it approaches the coast, but still potentially like, a little bit of a stronger storm uh, than the last model runs. If we go to the last model run, you see it was uh, around uh, a 962 at landfall. 
um and 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 are yeah like 970 960s in there and then now it's at 956 so definitely still that weakening trend as it approaches land um but uh, you know not as much so it looks like we've kind of come to like a middle ground agreement here and tampa is definitely gonna have to continue to watch out for this storm uh i i just want you guys to have um that understanding that even though this thing is going to be weakening as it approaches landfall that doesn't mean don't prepare <laughs> we're still talking about a cat 2 cat 3 hurricane at landfall making direct impacts in an area that's very susceptible uh to storm surge that's still in the realm of possibilities but i would still watch for these models to try to shift to the south because remember the the if it stays like this tampa is going to get big impacts but if it goes migrates a little bit further to the south we're going to see bigger impacts for cape coral uh, next what we're going to do is look at the rainfall total see if those have shifted around at all and uh, also talk about uh, further inland impacts all right, looking at the winds across uh, Florida as this thing approaches, as you can see, uh, still kind of expecting some gustier winds now, every now and then uh, uh, going into what appears to be, yeah, October 6, 11 p.m. there on Sunday. Uh, could get up to those 30 mile per hour wind gusts already. And then as uh, Milton tries to approach, those winds will kind of uh, calm down. You know, it's still in the 20s, but then as it approaches, you know, we're really going to start to see those winds pick up uh, into tropical storm force and maybe start to see some power outages as early as Wednesday at 8 a.m. So that's still kind of the case here. Uh, this is the GFS's run. So we're still kind of looking at a more northerly trajectory here. But just keep in mind that a lot of our hurricane models are to the south of this. So we could see some more intense sto our storm surge or winds over there uh, near the Sarasota area, even, you know, maybe some 50 to 60 mile per hour winds over there near Cape Coral if this thing is further to the south. Uh, and then also just kind of shift those winds a little bit further to the south, you know, just keep that in mind that that is still a possibility. So Orlando would get some stronger winds uh, if we get a more southern uh, landfall potentially uh, 70 mile per hour winds as that pushes off to the east towards Daytona Beach. Um, you know, it could also see some more significant winds if that's a little bit further to the south. Uh, you can see that we're talking about six, 67 mile per hour winds as we get into 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And um, and yeah, you guys uh, definitely need to be keeping in mind though that again, this could be further south. Uh, some impacts as far as across the entire area where this thing is going to go could see up to tropical storm force uh, to. Um, to uh, you know, hurricane force wind gusts, and now talking about the uh, precipitation that is going to be possible uh, at, with Wilton, uh, you can see that uh, as we get closer and closer to the storm coming with that stalled front, uh, we're obviously going to be seeing some more rain and that's going to be out in front of this storm so you know just before the storm even approaches we're going to start to see you know some two to three maybe even four inches of rainfall uh, starting to accumulate for some folks so we could already be seeing flood warnings and again this is still i mean here we are uh we are over here at sunday or uh, sorry tuesday at around 5 p.m and we are still seeing those uh those rain those rain amounts pick up even before uh wilton makes landfall our milton makes landfall here uh and as you can see the, the GFS is obviously going to bring these rain totals a little bit further to the north. Look at that near Gainesville, around 16 inches of rain. This could definitely be a big rain uh, event here that could cause major flooding uh, and potentially life-threatening flooding uh, with that amount. I mean, 16 inches of rain is a lot. But just keep in mind, again, that a lot of the models are further south than this. So that means we also have to shift this rain further south, too, and keep that as a possibility. You know, potentially uh, as far south as Orlando or Daytona Beach could be getting uh, some of these more significant amounts. Out. So I would definitely still be preparing for some flooding there in Orlando and Daytona Beach. Also there near Tampa, if this thing makes landfall near Tampa, we're definitely going to be seeing some heavier rain and rain accumulations there as well. All right, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys for watching again. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button uh, as it does help me reach more people in the path of the storm. And we'll be doing more updates. I got maybe two more videos coming today, so we will keep you in the loop. But yeah, uh, Milton is a hurricane. Not good.